going to take you through stripping down an oil pump. Uh, if you looked at my last video you'll find out that my engine seized, I lost piston 3 and I'm just basically going through this to have a look and see if there's any faults I can find. Um, it's always good to see someone else do it so I thought I'd show you and then you realise that if you're taking it all apart you're not going to break anything. So let's have a quick look over it and I'll show you. Then, So here's your oil pump. Simple bit of kit, it's actually upside down in the picture. But this is your pickup and your sump. It has a mesh filter inside just to stop big debris getting up. You have your sprocket on the end, uh, powering the gears inside, and that's run off the chain off the crank. And there's an R clip here, you can see, holding a spring and your pressure relief valve inside here. And we'll strip it down. And we'll have a look inside and you'll see what's what. Right then, we've got four T30s on the end. So we'll crack them off and we'll have a look inside. Careful not to round them, but they're not that tight. So, all right, we'll do that. Okay, so they're cracked loose and we'll spin them out. If I remember, this one here is shorter than M3. That's the only difference. Okay, so let's have a look. Doo -doo -doo. Let's spin them out. So, that's your short one. And you don't have to worry. This is, I'm literally holding it together right now. There's nothing that's going to fall out. No real problems in there. Well, I'm open up. And that's it. Three bolts. And it's apart. Simple enough. You've got two gears in there. Suction up through here. Don't know if you can see that on there. I do. One minute. There we are. You've got suction up through there. It's drawn in from that side, pulled through your gears, and pressurised up into the block. In here, you have your pressure relief valve. There's a large spring in there, well, it's not even large. And when the pressure reaches a certain amount, should we say three bar, I think it is, something like that in these, that opens and bleeds off the excess pressure. Right, so you've got your two gears. If I give that a little tap and a wiggle, there you are. You've got a slave gear and your driven gear off the sprocket. I'm hoping you can see that. Yep. And we're looking for signs of wear on the ends, signs of wear on the shafts, slack, play. There is a bit of up and down. Don't worry about that, that's how it's meant to be. And any damage at all in there. This one, nothing. Spotless. Right then, so here's our R clip on the end. So we're just going to pop that up. Little flat screwdriver. Leave it up. What I'm going to say, Possibly keep your thumb over that because it might spring out a little bit. And pop that up. And there we go. You have your spring. A retaining pin, I'm going to call it. I'm not actually sure of the technical name. It's got a groove in just to hold that R clip. There's your spring. As you can see, no brakes, all intact. Inside here, there is. It's. The pressure relief valve. The problem is getting it out. It won't come all the way out by itself. Um, so what you have to do, get a little L-shaped hook or something, put it down there and prod the end. If you have, I don't know, one minute. You can prod the end of it. I push it up. You see there, where's the light catch it? There, there's a pin. You can push on the end of that pin and it will push it down. But it only goes so far by itself. I have a little hook there. Just gently pull it in. Find the end and push it out. So just give me a second. Right. After a bit of poking. 
there it is. This is your pressure relief valve. Let's give it a quick clean. You've got a groove. I don't know if you can see that. But there is a slight groove in the end of it. And uh, basically the oil pressure pushes on this, compresses your spring, that was the oil passed. But again, there's no scoring, nothing. Just a general wear and tear I would say. No problems in there. Also, if I clean this face here, you'll see, you can see where the gears have been running against it, but there's no deep scoring again. And it all looks okay. Now, the truth is, I've been lying to you. This isn't the pump from my engine. This is from a friend's 172 with a head gasket gone. And I stripped this one down just basically to show you lot. My pump is down here. Again, no, there was no major faults. But where pieces are bearing and everything has been passing through, you can see it's a little bit more scored. You can feel them with your fingernail. And on this side, if you bend these flaps off, that removes, you can get to your mesh filter. And there was loads of pieces of bearing, just general crap that it flew around from that bearing fail. Also, if I get my gearing out, you can see at just about, there's marks, nothing major again though. It's little scoring marks, see, along here. If I catch it on the right. That's just where pieces of bearing have been compressed, squashed, and generally worn away at the pace. Not enough for an engine to fail. This is where the engines already start to fail and pieces have been passed into the engine. And it was a brand new pump. I think you can see how shiny this one is to compare how brown that was. Right then. So there's no pump stripped down for you. Simple. As you've seen, I found no real damage in mine and the old one that I found off my friend. Um, I'm not too worried actually about using my one again. There's a little bit of scoring as you can see. I might even get this skimmed and just slice up just because it's brand new. I like it. It's nice and shiny. <laughs> uh, I should just buy a new one. To be fair, I think about 70 quid. But I will be modifying my pump because I'm running turbo basically double the power it should be. I will be upping the pressure of my pump. There's, I'm not going to tell you to do this. It's your choice. But I will be... There's two ways you can probably do it, to be fair. You can get a little washer, put it on the end of that, and let it space to spring out a little bit. Or you can do what I'm going to do is, you can see there, there's a hole. I will be drilling a hole a couple of mil further down, same size, straight through 90 degrees, and that will compress the spring a little bit more, and that will up the pressure of the pump. I can't be precise that the pressure is going to tell you, that's why I'm telling you it's your own risk if you ever want to do it, but it's not going to cause me any problems, I hope. But the higher RPMs, the higher power, the higher heat, a bit more pressure is always good in my eyes. So that's what I'll be doing. And what I do now is I quickly show you, to be fair, I don't need to show you. Spring goes back in, in its cup, squash it in, I'll clip through. Easy. The gears go back on. There's a groove on the side that's facing out. Make sure you get that the same as the other one. You can see the groove there. Yep. Simple as. Four bolts, bolts back together. You're not, whoops. You're not idiots, you can do it. So there you are. I hope it's a little bit helpful for you. A bit of guidance. I'll try and do some more as I go along. Thank you.